Somebody here is going to take off and have a wondrous life. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not, not unto men. He that speaketh, when you talk about this tongue business, <laughs> some people don't get it. They say, well, Pentecostals are always emphasizing speaking in tongues. Why are they always talking about it? One, we don't always talk about it. People make us talk about it by asking us about it. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, pay attention, speaketh not unto men, not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him. The person speaking is also a man, correct? Yes. So he doesn't understand what he's speaking. He said, for no man understandeth him, including he himself speaking it. Because that's one of the pitfalls or one of the um, reasons why people don't speak in other tongues very much. Because it's, I, I just, I just, ah, I don't even understand what I'm speaking. Or somebody wants to discourage you, he said, do you understand what you're speaking? He said, no man understandeth him, including you speaking it. But notice, he said, how be it? What does the how be it mean? Regardless, even though no man understands you and you don't understand yourself, he said, how be it? Regardless of all that, in the spirit, he speaketh mysteries. In the spirit, he speaketh mysteries. The divine secrets of God. He utters mysteries. We speak this wisdom in a mystery. This wisdom ordained for our glory. We speak it in a mystery. How do I have a glorious life consistently? He says, speak wisdom. If I speak the wisdom, what happens in my life? If I speak the wisdom of God, what happens in my life? He said, that wisdom, God ordained it for my glory. God fashioned it for my glory. So if there is no glory in my life, I will speak wisdom and glory will appear. Now, notice, notice. Hmm. Ah. Go to verse 5. Let's read the first part of verse 5. He said, the first part is what I'm interested in. He said, I would that ye all speak with tongues. I want all of you to speak with tongues. Go back to verse 2. Verse 2. I want to show you a different, different translations, then we'll move on. Give me Weymouth's translation. Pay attention. He says, For he who speaks in an unknown tongue is not, is not speaking to men. He made it clear. Now, <laughs> one second. Um, Brother Higgins' father-in-law was, they were Methodists. And their Methodist church didn't believe in speaking in tongues. So, eventually, when the son-in-law became the pastor, the boy brought the Holy Ghost. So, someone got filled with the Holy Spirit and was speaking in tongues. So, another person said to the father-in-law after the service, he said, I heard somebody was speaking in tongues. What was he saying? He said, he wasn't talking to me. <laughs> he didn't know he was scriptural. Did you get what I'm saying? The, the man said, he wasn't talking to me. I don't know what he was saying. He wasn't talking to me. <laughs> the man was very scriptural. He said, for he who speaks in an unknown tongue is not speaking to men. He's not speaking to men. They, they, whatever he's saying is not directed to men. If he's directed to men, God will produce an interpretation for men to understand it. So that's different. That's not what we're dealing with. 
For he who speaks in an unknown tongue is not, is not. What can be clearer than that? He's not speaking to men, but to who? He said for no man, no one, no one. Is the person speaking one of the ones? <laughs> but for no one understands him. Yet, pay attention. Yet in the spirit, he is speaking secret truths. Secret truths. He's uttering secret truths. Have you ever had a secret with your wife? Somebody can be around. Two of you will finish a discussion and the person will understand one word. You have eye movements and codes. You can raise your kids where by the time you just blink an eye, they understood exactly what you meant. It means we have a visitor go and get a drink. And the person that was there didn't even understand what was said. You weren't talking to them. Give me the next translation. International Standard Version. For the person who speaks in a foreign language is not actually speaking to people but to God. I hope you get what it means by foreign language. It's not, it's not language of, for instance, I'm speaking French. If I'm speaking French, a French man will understand me. You get it? So it will negate, is not speaking to people because a French man is, so the foreign language it means is not foreign. It means foreign because you didn't learn it. He that speaks in a foreign language is not actually speaking to people but to God. This is the part I'm, I'm interested in. Indeed, no one understands him. No one. No one. Because he is talking. He is talking. He is ayakuda. He is talking. He aliaguzede. He is talking about secrets by the spirit. He is talking about secrets. There are things about your life that God does not want to come out in the open. So he wants you to pray about it in the secret. He wants to have an intimate discussion with you in a secret place. He wants two of you to discuss it in coded language. So you begin to speak it in tongues. <laughs> hey! Give me um, the next translation. William's translation. Uh, give me Bible in basic English first. BPE. First. For he who makes use of tongues. Who makes use? Everybody say, I use tongues. I use tongues. Did you see the expression? Who makes use? You are supposed to use it. You will have a glorious life this year. Yeah. He said, he who makes use of tongues. Alalabosh. Is not talking to men, but to God. But to God. Because no one has the sense of what he is saying. No one has the sense of it. That's why some people say, what? You're not making sense. Lemo sikata ibra du gre tu meliankuske. What are you talking? You're not making sense. Have you ever seen somebody who is... um? Let's say you hear, you've never had um, maybe Hausa before, or Yoruba language, or Igbo language, or Efik. You've never heard it before. And the first time you see an Efik man, he starts rattling out Efik. That's what the Romans called barbarians. If you can't speak Latin, they call you a barbarian. Because you sound like, I just finished my explanation. <laughs> I think my hands helped. Praise God. <laughs> they call them barbarians. So he said, he who makes use of tongues is not talking to men, but to God. Because no one has a sense of what he is saying. But in the spirit, he is talking of secret things. Secret things. That's what he's discussing with God. Then, William's translation. This has always been one of my best translations. 
For he, for whoever speaks in ecstasy, that's where I got it. Whoever speaks in ecstasy is speaking not to men but to God. For no one understands him. And yet, by the Spirit, he is speaking secret truths. Secret truths. What will your life be like if you spend a lot of time speaking in tongues? By spending a lot of time, I don't mean you should lock your door. That's not, you see, speaking in tongues is so wonderful. Paul the Apostle said in this same First Corinthians chapter 14, he said, I thank my God I speak in tongues more than you all. Now, he didn't mean he locked up himself more than everybody and spoke in tongues and spoke in tongues. No. The man was, he was moving from place to place, traveling and doing a lot of missions work. But he, in the midst of it, I thank my God I speak with tongues more than you all. The man said, uh, put, find this for me in the Amplified. This will shock you. The Amplified will shock you. This man's boast. So, Paul the Apostle didn't, you know, you know, with everything he's doing, let's read this. I thank God that I speak in strange tongues, languages, more than all of you, more than any of you, and all of you put together. I just saw this for the first time. That means he gathered a whole church in Corinth. Not one church. All of them in Corinth. He said, all of you put together. When God equates your tongues to mine, <laughs> I do it more than all of you. You see why he was a success? That's why the man was a huge, huge success. For him to achieve that, it meant when Paul is taking a bath, he's speaking in tongues. When Paul is walking on the road, he's speaking in tongues. When he's lying down to sleep, he speaks in tongues to sleep. Wakes up speaking in tongues. He doesn't wake up and say, what will happen today? Hey, hey, the way my life is. No, he didn't have time for that. He woke up. Kakatu lebo dabaya. Say, motoprate yakata. Meso, he's arranging his clothes. Kinando bredia kuko sinama. Mateya tute kilebo. Toroba, pata, pata, pataya. That's what the guy was doing with his life. As he drove, as he drove. Oh, no, he didn't drive. <laughs> as he was riding his donkey or his horse. He was speaking in tongues. You see why the man was never discouraged. They beat him, beat him, stoned him to death. He got up and went to preach again. Never discouraged. Nothing could happen to the man that would put him. He said, who is me if I preach not the gospel? He couldn't get discouraged. And he couldn't fail. They arrested him, threw him in prison. He came out. From prison, he wrote letters, letters. What do you think he was doing in prison? Speaking in tongues. Oh, said, my, I'm so bored. My life is bored. Bored. Bo bored? Bored? God is giving you opportunity to speak in tongues. Amen. Say a big amen. amen. So what did he do? He spoke in other tongues. As he walked on the road, he spoke in tongues. I'm sure when he wanted to bless his food, he blessed it in tongues. The only thing is just be careful because you end up, <laughs> you end up praying a whole lot before you grab a bite. You know, this man of God was invited to for dinner in his uh, children's his son his son's house and so they said that why don't you pray over the meal before we eat well he's not they're not strangers to him so he started speaking in tongues <laughs> before they ate that food he prophesied three years yes he told them what three years will be. He said, the coming year shall be this. The other year shall be this. The one following shall be this. This is over praying of thanks. <laughs> you see, you're going to have strange encounters. If I told you, if I ever told you that if you don't pray in tongues, you are such changing yourself. How will you take that? 
if you don't take advantage of speaking in tongues, you are holding yourself. You, your spirit man wants to fly, but you, are, you put... <laughs> if you don't speak in tongues, it's like something is holding your spirit from flying. Your life from taking up in a dimension. Satan knows what this is. No prophet in the Bible ever spoke in tongues. Jesus of Nazareth, our Lord, never spoke in tongues. Why? Tongues was a special gift for the church. That's why before he left, he said, greater works than this shall you do. He said, because I go to the Father. If I go to the Father, what will happen? He will send the Holy Ghost. When the Holy Spirit comes, what will be the evidence? Say, you begin to speak in tongues. You begin to utter divine secrets, mysteries in the spirit realm. Your life will not be the same. Your life will not be the same. There are so many things that will take place in your life. But you need to pray them out. You need to speak them out through speaking in tongues. Can I get a strong amen? Amen.